Good morning. Today I'm going to teach you how to rebuild a carburetor on a Briggs & Stratton engine. Uh, it's a quantum style engine and it's a 6.75 horsepower, but most of the carburetors are all the same. So the first thing you want to do is uh, drain the gas out, however you can do that safely. Um, the tools you will need to remove the carburetor for rebuilding are a, you'll need a 5 16 socket or whatever and a 3 8 and to make your life easier I always have a pair of these around too so basically what you want to do to remove the carburetor is take off the air filter then you have three bolts that mount the air filter housing to the carburetor these two here basically mount directly to the carburetor and this just mounts to a little bracket. Once you have those three out, you will be able to remove this. It just pops right out. Uh, you can see this is the crankcase breather hose. You want to make sure that you reconnect it uh, when you reassemble. Uh, looks like I'm also going to need a Phillips head screwdriver and a quarter inch wrench because I'll have to take this housing off to get to this um, little mounting bolt here for the choke. Go ahead and take off the top cover here. It's just two Phillips heads usually. Move that aside. Zoom in here a little bit. And this is the one I'll be removing next. You have to be really careful with this mechanism here after you remove this bolt. Um, it's real easy to displace this mechanism here on the inside um, where it attaches over here. So just be very careful when you take it loose not to, to jar it too much. There's a little spring here, so be careful that doesn't go flying. Really important when you re-tighten this to put it back together that you don't over-tighten it. It's real easy to strip out the housing here. Alright, so we're loose there. Uh, what I always do before I remove loosen the carburetor, uh, go ahead and take off the hose clamp and remove the fuel hose. I say I did drain the gas before I got started here so hopefully there's none in there. Well, let me show you some of the corrosion here on this fuel inlet. Yeah, all that gross stuff. Anyways, you can see one of the carburetor mount bolts. You have two of them. There's one back in there and then one on the other side. And that's the 3 8 The socket that you'll be using for that. Just gotta be careful working in the gravel here. I always lose my stuff. So we'll remove this 3 8 we remove this 3 8 and there is a linkage we're going to have to take out and as with most most carburetors you pull it out and you rotate the carburetor and it comes right off all right so you'll go ahead and pull the carburetor free and you can see how the the linkage you just kind of rotate the carburetor you can see that on the camera and it slides right off. This is actually the auto choke mechanism. So um, this engine doesn't have a primer you have to worry about. It automatically adjusts the choke depending on the temperature of the engine. It's pretty slick. There's also a little o-ring on here that you need to be cautious of uh, that it remains on there when you reassemble things. It's usually in good condition. I rarely have to replace them but you can see it on there. You're right there on the intake, uh, you have that O-ring, so you want to make sure that stays on there. Also a good time to inspect the fuel line. Um, 
just replace it. That's usually the best thing to do. Uh, if I don't have any and I'm really in a pinch, I'll just go ahead and clean out the inside um, of it. All the sediment seems to accumulate right down here on the end. But you clean that out real good, flush it, and you should be okay. Um, but it's always a good idea to replace the fuel line if you can. Okay, so to start cleaning and rebuilding this carburetor, um, first thing I always do is remove the float pin. As well as the float and the float valve, which should be attached to it. It's kind of stuck in there. You can see there's a lot of uh, varnishing in this carburetor. It doesn't even want to come out. Uh, be gentle because it is a plastic float. You can pry up on it a little bit here. Might have to soak this carburetor first, although I do see it's coming up a bit. Eesh, that's nasty in there. Okay, got it out. It's in pretty bad shape, but I think we can clean it up. So before I soak this carburetor, there's a couple of things that a lot of folks overlook. There is a seat down in this hole, a little rubber seat that needs to be removed and replaced with a new one whenever you rebuild the carburetor. I'm also going to use this little pick here to remove that needle seat as well as help take off the float bolt o-ring which we will discard. Um, so basically what you just got to be very careful down in there when removing that seat to not scratch the body of the carburetor but get in there so you can Pull that little rubber piece out. Sometimes it comes out in pieces and it's usually red in color or green. You'll see when it comes out. There we go. And there we are in really bad shape. So we'll replace that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scrape off some of this corrosion and we're going to soak this carburetor overnight. When you're rebuilding a quantum carburetor these are pretty much the parts that you're going to replace most commonly. The float bolt o-ring, the seat, and the float needle. This is the needle and seat that I'll be putting in there as well as a new float bolt So I'm going to soak this carburetor and all the components in coke Sometimes it works to help um, get all that crud off there. Sometimes it doesn't, but I always like to use, uh, try using this first before I go to the harsh chemicals. So sometimes I'm really impressed with how Coca-Cola cleans um, dirty carburetors. I don't know if you can see, but um, what an improvement. And most of that is just from soaking in Coca-Cola for a few hours and scrubbing with scrub brushes. But we're darn near spotless. So even after soaking these carburetors, uh, you can still get some crud that refuses to come out. Uh, use all kinds of tools to clean it out, Q-tips, brass brushes. Um, but this is one of my favorites. It's basically just wire, and I separate the strands, and I'm able to use that to poke down into these small holes and clean everything out. Sometimes it takes a few times. Um, and you may even reinstall this and hook up the carburetor and the mower runs for a minute or two and then dies. And oftentimes what happens is there's a piece of crud down on the inside of this main jet and uh, it dislodges and plugs up the main jet hole. And something the size of a speck of sand can plug up the main jet and prevent this carburetor from running. And we will rinse thoroughly with carburetor cleaner as well to get all the Coke, Coca-Cola residue off there, of course. So this is the easiest way I've found to do this. Um, remember, we have to replace the carburetor 
seat, um, which is where this Q-tip is. I'm making sure it's good and cleaned out. Now when you install the seat, you want to make sure that you install it. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little groove there. And you want to install it groove side down. Let's see, can you see it? Maybe, maybe not. Anyways, so what I always do is I spray a little bit of uh, WD-40 down in there just to make sure uh, the seat slides down in. You stick that in there just enough to get it in there straight with the grooves down. And then I just use a little punch and I push this all the way down and seat it. Can you see that down in there? Make sure that seats down all the way. You don't have to push it real hard, but enough to make sure it's seated. All right, now we're ready for the new float valve, which is right here. And the float. Okay, so I have the float here with the new float valve attached right there. And the hinge pin, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble just like we took it apart. Put the hinge pin in. All right, we have a working carburetor again. The brass brush is the thing to use for cleaning out all the carburetor parts. It won't gouge the metal. So when you're putting the float bowl gasket back on, um, I just want to mention there is two different types. There's a thicker one and a thinner one. And you can see the one that's all dirty, uh, the one that came off of it, is actually the thicker one. So we will make sure to replace it with the, the thicker one. Now be careful not to over tighten this. This is a brass nut or a, bat, a bolt going into an aluminum carburetor so you know be very careful not too tight all right let's go ahead and get this thing back together I'm gonna make some important points as I'm going back together here too so once again make sure that the o-ring is still on the intake um, let's go ahead and put it on the throttle linkage so remember I'm gonna turn the carburetor this way put it on and rotate that will get it on the linkage. All right, make sure it's not bound up. Looks good. Let's go ahead and mount the auto choke mechanism here. And you want to make sure that the pin on the auto choke mechanism goes down through the slot on your choke here on the carburetor. And you can just finger tight that for now. Okay, you're going to want to get your 3 8 bolts right here to that mount the carburetor on. It's just two of them. All right, the other 3 8 And I kind of go back and forth tightening them up. Not too tight. Right, I still need to tighten up the auto choke, but it looks like it's functioning correctly. And the throttle linkage is also functioning correctly. It's not, it's not bound up or anything. Go ahead and put the fuel line on. Get my pliers for the clamp. And you must be very careful when tightening this down because it's it's a small uh, quarter inch and you can very easily strip out the aluminum that it threads into. But one thing to mention um, on the back of the carburetor on the air filter mounting plate there is a, a gasket. It's not as important with the auto choke but if this was a push button primer style setup you definitely need to replace this gasket. 
uh, but I'm not going to do that today with this auto choke unit. All right, just like it, put that uh, this back on just like it came off. Usually tighten up the uh, the two screws that go directly into the carburetor first. You want to install them all before you start tightening down. That's five sixteenths. Make sure we're square on there. Alright, so after I tighten up these three, I recheck my linkages, make sure everything's still functioning correctly there. And we're ready for the air filter. Alright, this baby is ready to test out. I'm going to remove this little cover, makes my life easier. Not too tight because it is plastic you're screwing into. Just snug. It'll stay. I'm going to give you some top secret information right now. So most lawnmowers have a throttle spring, a governor control spring. Uh, if your lawnmower doesn't rev up very well or you need more power, you may need to adjust this spring right here and this bracket um, to increase the rev of the lawnmower. All you need to do is bend this bracket that way a little bit. I mean just a little bit and it will increase the RPMs of the lawnmower. Tech tip of the day. All right, let's test it out.